In this video, I'm interviewing full-time SWAT operator Alan Goodrich, who works for a major metropolitan police department. And throughout his career, particularly in SWAT, he has responded to barricaded suspects, hostage situations, armed and violent individuals, but also he responded to the worst mass killing in American history. So he's going to share his experience of what he's learned from that and offer advice to police and anyone else who finds themselves in these types of situations. Let's get right to the interview with Alan Goodrich. When you've responded to what most know as active shooter situations, but let's keep it real. It's an active attacker, active killer. They're there to kill as many people as possible. And in, in your experience of responding to incidents like this, we got to start with mindset first. Like the officers have to go to stop the threat. So how do you get past any initial human senses of nervousness, fear, stuff like that? As an officer, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really down to your training. A lot of guys in some small departments may not, they may not have the, the, the privilege or luck to have a lot of training or equipment with some of these incidences, but the, some of the larger departments do. But um, when you're trained to respond to an active assailant as an officer, just go do your job, you know, don't worry about anything else. Just think about the people on the other side of that door and go do your job. Just don't hesitate. Just get in there as quick as you can. A lot of, uh, you know, the statistics say that on an active assailant or a really bad situation like this, when the, the bad guy is just killing innocent people, that almost immediately stops the first time they come into contact with somebody else that's putting force on them. So my advice is just get in there and, and put pressure on the bad guy. If you find yourself in a situation where, unfortunately, there's that phrase, there's, what is it, too, too many chiefs and not enough Indians, you got to do what you got to do. And you can't let the thought of, well, I get in trouble if if this happens or that happens. Uh, how, how do you how do you relay effective communication, but also not getting in your own way? Well, the, fortunately, you know, most of the chiefs and are, are, you know, in the teepee while the Indians are out hunting. So those chiefs aren't going to show up until the latter end of the process. So once that happens, you know, let the chiefs do their job, let them fight over jurisdictions, let them do their, their administrative stuff. But when it's actively going on and you have an active situation, the Indians got to huddle up and get in there and get their job done. So you link up with as many people as you can and whatever your training re requires. If it's one man, two man, three, whatever, you link up with as many people as you can, be it a security officer, a school police officer, resource officer, local jurisdiction, neighboring jurisdiction, you just get in there and, and get in there as quick as you can. Absolutely. Thank you for that advice. And what advice would you give so far as physically maintaining composure so that emotions don't run too high, particularly negative emotions, which can lead to negative decisions, but also keeping uh, calm enough so that you don't get uh, so sucked into tunnel vision, stuff like that. For the officers on that side of things, you know, there's they're strength in numbers, right? Now, I would, I would hate to respond to something alone. I've, I've been in situations where I've had to respond alone, but there's strength in numbers. So you grab your buddy next to you, you grab that guy, and you become that leader, and you say, hey, you, you, me, let's go, on me. And you go towards the problem, take a few breaths, and really just, just focus on, if you can, if it's possible, focus on the reason why you're there. Because on the other side of that door or the other side of that wall or the other building you're going into, there's somebody that actually matters, that actually cares. That's a different human being. The self-preservation has got to go out the window and you got to think about that other person. 100%. And there was a mentor that you told me about who gave you solid advice when you were in a stack one time about to go in, uh, take three deep breaths. Doesn't take long to take three deep breaths. Take three deep breaths, focus on your mission, and remember that that person over there deserves to be saved. So let's go. 100%. Uh, I'm glad we're having this interview. And so far as the reality of the situation is, unfortunately, uh, there will probably be, be uh, victims. And then there will be, uh, like, an, as of the recording of this video, sadly, in Georgia, two students killed, two teachers killed, and nine wounded. There's parents that are in grief now, and there's there's other family members in grief. The community is stricken with grief what advice would you give to officers or anybody else when it comes to the coping with the, the aftermath? And I know that's a loaded question, but just based on your experience, what can you say? I mean, you know, we, I've got experience with the people here in Las Vegas that lost their lives during that tragedy. Um, nothing's going to replace them They're It's the worst thing in the world is to lose somebody close to you. They're, they're gone. It's, they're not coming back. 
and it sounds callous to say, and it sounds horrible. Um, but moving forward is difficult. It's, it's extremely difficult. Thank goodness. I I've not lost a member in one of those or a family member in any of those positions, but I've been around a lot of the people that have, you know, survivors and family members of, of fallen in Las Vegas. And they, I found that they stick together really well. So I, I would just give the advice of, of, of stick together after an incident like that. Remember the people next to you and, and you'll create those bonds that'll never be forgotten. So moving forward, like I said, strength in numbers. So stick together with the people that were affected and, and you'll never lose those friendships and those bonds. Found words and speaking on moving forward, obviously it's good to have a critical incident debrief where you say, what can we have done better? What, what did happen? What did we do well? Uh, that kind of thing. And you hope the officers did their job right and stopped the threat as soon as possible. But uh, in my experience, the numerous years I worked in law enforcement, I couldn't rely just on the police department's training. Like the training was good when we had it, but it just wasn't enough so far as getting in the reps. So what advice do you give to officers who, what type of training, what type of mental rehearsal, what should they do on their own time or during downtime to help prepare themselves to be that right cop that shows up to a critical incident. Well, you are a Marine. So you have, you have that side to, you have, you have your training as a Marine, you have your combat experience to rely on. Um, some of us don't have that. Some of us don't have those experiences. So, you know, relying on those folks who do have those backgrounds is huge. But if you don't have that background, it's not hard to find someone who does. So, you can reach out. And, and if your department's really not Johnny on the spot with the training and stuff, take it on yourself. Uh, I hate to say it, but these things, these things are going to happen in the future. They, they are hopefully knock on wood. It doesn't happen in your area, but they, they are going to happen. So prepare for them. And if that's not your forte and that's not your expertise, find somebody whose job it was, or has a lot of experience that, and you can do stuff on your own, you know, your days off or, you could host some training on your days you work together. You can link up with other jurisdictions. I know a lot of departments have struggles with time and training, but uh, you can take it on yourself. Uh, as far as the actual incident goes, I mean, that's that's a whole different story because, you know, everybody reacts differently when the bullets fly. But I would, I would look to a guy like you if I were in that situation. I'd be like, hey, Scott, you know, can you teach me this? And can we train this when we go over this? So look to those guys who have that experience. What advice do you give to officers regarding moving forward just – how do they work on their communication, teamwork abilities? Any any advice on that? Well, the, the communication on those big incidences, that's that's always going to be the problem. I mean, you'll you'll see that no matter where you are, you're at. Communication is difficult. I find uh, less talk is more sometimes on the radio, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if it's not pertinent, get off the radio. Uh, if you don't need to say it, then don't. You know, don't tie up that radio for the people who do. Uh, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, look around, be aware of your surroundings, uh, go towards the threat and, uh, man, just stay off that radio as much as you can, because there's going to be a lot of chit chat, a lot of chatter, and it's going to get really, really convoluted really quick. So get off that dang radio and just focus on the area around you and, and get to the threat. Thank you for watching the video. And I hope you found the advice helpful, particularly those of you who work in law enforcement, but I wanted to let you know that Alan wrote a book titled October Strong. And I just got done reading it. Very good book. But the thing is this, even if you don't like reading, buy the book. You want to know why? Because, well, it is a good book. Yes. However, all of the proceeds from the book go towards helping wounded law enforcement through the Wounded Blue. They take care of wounded law enforcement officers, particularly ones who don't get the care they deserve or that sometimes through the bureaucratic process, the care they need, it falls short. Therefore, the Wounded Blue steps up. There's a link below. Make sure you click that. Thank you again, and I look forward to talking to you again in another video.